Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be talking all about the safety of sunless tanners. Ever since my video reacting to popular YouTuber Mike Thurston's tanning tips video, I got a lot of comments in that video. Hey, I heard sunless tanners aren't actually safe, that they may in fact increase skin aging. Can you please do a video on this? Comment on the safety of sunless tanners. Sunless tanners are really popular and their active ingredient is something called dihydroxyacetone or DHA. It is a sugar and back in the 20s, it was actually used as a part of diabetic diets. And later in the 50s at Cincinnati Children's Hospital, they were giving it to kids by mouth as part of something called an oral tolerance test. They noticed that the DHA, when it got on the skin around their mouth as they were giving it to them by mouth, that it turned their skin, was kind of orangey tan color. So that's sort of how DHA was discovered as a tanning ingredient. The FDA reviewed its safety and deemed it safe as a color additive. And then we now have all of these sunless tanners that are so popular. The way DHA works is when it's applied to the skin, it reacts with amino acids in the top layer of the skin, the stratum corneum. And that reaction is known as a Maillard reaction. And it produces these amorphous pigments called melanoidins that are actually chemically similar to our skin's pigment melanin. And these melanoidins are what impart a brownish color to the stratum corneum. So the reaction is localized just in that top layer. And the stratum corneum is not a fixed structure. It turns over. That's why you have to eventually reapply the sunless tanner. It's not permanent. Is it safe? Yes. DHA is more than safe to apply to the skin. Back in the 60s, they did extensive safety testing both in animal models as well as in humans deemed that it is safe for topical application as well as oral ingestion. Remember, originally they were giving it to children in the hospital. It's a sugar and they were also, you know, feeding it to diabetics at one point. So it is safe. It's not toxic. Now, when you apply it to your skin, it's been shown that systemic absorption, meaning penetrating through your skin into your body is negligible. Uh, it's pretty much localized to that top layer of the skin, the stratum corneum, which again is turning over and shedding. That's why you need to reapply it. So a lot of people, you know, fear that DHA is harmful to human health. It's not. It's actually naturally part of your body's metabolic processes. And if it does get absorbed into the body to whatever negligible fraction of a micromole, well, then your body can handle it. Red blood cells can um, metabolize it. Back in the 60s, they did a lot of mouse studies on topical application of DHA to mice. And they found that after eight weeks of applying DHA to the skin, there was no increase in any kind of leukemias, lymphomas. And interestingly enough, another mouse study at that time showed that 20% DHA applied to mouse skin actually protected them from UV mediated skin cancer. They also did some studies in bacteria that showed that UV actually could suppress uh, mutagenicity. But science is not perfect. And again, we're not bacteria, we're not mice. And other studies later on down the road actually contradicted some of these findings. We have some other studies that looked at bacteria and showed they actually had a slightly increased risk of mutagenicity when exposed to DHA. The study that I think alarms people the most is one in which researchers exposed keratinocytes, which are the cells in your skin, in a dish to DHA, and they showed that there was increased cell death and DNA damage. But remember, you are not a skin cell in a dish, and your skin has things like your immune system, all sorts of things. So just because it generates DNA damage in a cell in a dish, that does not actually equate to, oh, this is going to be mutagenic in humans. We have no evidence that Topically applied DHA causes DNA damage in actual real world use. Just that small little study in skin cells in a dish. Another contradictory study showed that in mice, when they applied DHA, there was actually uh, a for formation of free radicals. Now, you know, sunless tanners, they add things like antioxidants. And so just because free radicals are generated from the application of a topical product, that does not necessarily equate to this is gonna age your skin. A lot of things that we apply to the skin generate free radicals. Benzoyl peroxide, for example, that's how it works. And we have no evidence that topical benzoyl peroxide causes skin aging. So just because we have a small mouse study that showed an increase in free radicals, that doesn't really mean anything. It's, it's interesting, more studies are needed. Another study showed that DHA resulted in formation of advanced glycation end products. And you guys know from my videos that advanced glycation end products, they are 
uh, a contributing factor to skin aging. Advanced glycation end products, they bind in the deeper layers of the skin to things like collagen, elastin, and they result in sagginess, skin fragility. They're part of skin aging. But applying them to the stratum corneum, I mean, unless you're injecting them down into the dermis, it's not really a relevant site. Stratum corneum, that's not the site of wrinkle formation. Stratum corneum is up, up top. And then you have the epidermis, you know, it's part of the epidermis. And then below that, you have the dermis. That's where collagen and elastin is. Remember from the beginning of the video, DHA is it's not being it's not being absorbed down to those levels. Unless you are tattooing yourself with sunless tanner, tattoos work by depositing pigments into the dermis. So unless you are tattooing yourself with DHA, you don't need to worry about the formation of advanced glycation end products causing skin aging. That just doesn't make sense. Where wrinkles form from advanced glycation end products is not in the stratum corneum. And again, stratum corneum is gonna turn over, be shed, and that's why you have to reapply that that DHA to, again, form those melanoidins. So to be clear, when it comes to skin aging, we don't have any evidence whatsoever that people who use sunless tanners have accelerated skin aging. Remember, the majority of extrinsic aging, meaning aging of the skin re that results from things you are exposed to in your environment, not you know your genetics or underlying medical conditions, that is due to ultraviolet radiation, either from the sun or God forbid a tanning bed, which you should never, ever, ever get in one of those. It will increase your risk of melanoma tremendously as well as other skin cancers. I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the way that uh, DHA works is by the Maillard reaction forming uh, amorphous pigments, melanoidins, that are kind of similar to our skin's natural pigment, melanin. So can that protect us from UV rays like melanin can? It can actually. Um, it does not offer very good protection against UVB rays. Those are the burning rays. It, it offers no protection against that. That is why it is not approved as a sunscreen ingredient. It will not protect you from a burn, so you still need to you still need to be wearing sunscreen. It does not protect you from the damaging effects of UVB. But it actually can offer some decent protection against UVA. Those are those rays that penetrate very deeply into the skin and destroy collagen. And we have compelling evidence that shows that topically applied DHA offers good UVA protection. Many argue that it should be used or could be used as an adjunct to sunscreen to offer better UVA protection. We have some compelling clinical evidence to support this as well. About 30 years ago, there was a study looking at topically applied DHA and people who have skin diseases that are exquisitely sensitive to UVA, erythropoietic protoporphyria and polymorphous light eruption. Those patients, they get you know miserable skin reactions to UVA and they need good protection against that. Sunscreens, you know, they're kind of variable in their UVA protection. There was a study that showed that applying 3% DHA increased the sun tolerability of those patients anywhere from, here I wrote it down, 2.4 to 13.5 fold. That is a, that is a, you know, that is a leap in quality of light for those patients. Uh, very interesting study. This suggests that perhaps the melanoidins, which offer protection against UVA, can be useful as an adjunct to treating patients whose skin disease is sensitive to those UVA rays. But we're all exposed to UVA rays and while we don't all develop rashes to them, they do destroy collagen in the deeper layers of our skin and are responsible for skin aging. So you could begin to piece together and make the argument that rather than accelerating skin aging, using sunless tanners in theory could slow down the rate of skin aging, of course, if used in conjunction with a broad spectrum sunscreen, because they do offer some protection against those aging UVA rays. Now, I don't have a study to back that up. All we have is clinical, clinical experience using, these, using DHA and people with skin diseases that are sensitive to UVA. But it's interesting, more studies are needed, but I would not make the statement that sunless tanners increased skin aging. We really have no evidence to support that whatsoever. Now in dermatology, we have a special treatment called PUVA, uh, which actually uses UVA, those, those UVA rays. We take that 
and use it to treat certain skin conditions because UVA not only, of course, is it destructive to the deeper layers of the skin, but it sort of wipes out your immune system. And some inflammatory skin conditions benefit from that, namely psoriasis. However, they have areas surrounding their skin disease that are unaffected by their skin disease. Then why go exposing those areas to UVA unnecessarily? Well, there was a study that showed that applying DHA actually helped the psoriasis patients get clearer faster because of that UVA protection of their surrounding normal skin. You might say, well, wasn't it protecting the psoriasis? Here's the thing, psoriasis is a disease in which the skin turns over a lot faster in those psoriasis lesions. So the psoriasis lesions will shed the tanning pigments a lot faster than the surrounding healthy skin. So you can, you can exploit that in treating those patients with UVA to get more specific uh, treatment to just the disease areas with the UVA and they get clearer faster. Um, PUVA is not used that much anymore for, for psoriasis, but it still is used in some cases. Um, and so that, uh, I, I feel like they called it Turbo PUVA is what it was called. Uh, but it's very compelling that it could be used because of its UVA blocking ability to help those patients who are undergoing PUVA treatments get better results in that their neighboring unaffected skin, their healthy skin is getting protection from the treatment. So the treatment ends up being more specific to just the diseased areas. So as it stands now, I mean, sunless tanners have been around since the 70s. No evidence of any accelerated skin aging, certainly no evidence of any harm to human health. But obviously, you know, sunless tanners, they are cosmetics, they're not medications. So they don't undergo the same level of monitoring like a medication would. So I would say that more research is always needed and welcome, especially when we're talking about the sunless tanning spray booths, where you go into a booth and you are sprayed with DHA because we don't know about the safety of DHA when it comes in contact with the mucous membranes, your eyes, the, the lining in your nose, your mouth. And therefore the FDA warns consumers that if they're gonna use a spray tan, go in a spray tanning booth, that they should make sure to cover their eyes, their no nasal mucosa and not inhale any particles. Make sure that you apply. I always tell people apply Vaseline <laughs> to these areas, especially to the lips, to protect them from any of the sunless tanner getting on because we simply don't know if they're, if sunless tanner is safe to those areas. But that's kind of the a main gap in knowledge. But in your sunless tanning products that you buy in the store, lotions, creams, it's more than safe. And in fact, I would argue we need more research looking into DHA as a way to offer better UVA protection for people, not only with exquisitely sensitive diseases to UVA, but for everybody, because we know that UVA rays, while they don't do much of the burning that we experience when we get a sunburn, they do contribute to not only skin aging through the destruction of collagen, upregulation of matrix metalloprotein enzymes, they suppress tumor surveillance, and we know they play a major role in skin cancer formation. There is a small pilot study that did show that individuals when they did not apply DHA, their vitamin D levels in their serum rose more than when they applied a 9% DHA uh, lotion. But that is a small pilot study and it didn't show that, you know, sunless tanners caused vitamin D deficiency insufficiency. And they're worried that vitamin D is gonna be compromised by applying a sunless tanner. That doesn't make sense. If you know anything about how vitamin D synthesis occurs upon exposure to UV, you know that it is mediated by a specific wavelength of UVB and everything else from the sun means nothing to vitamin D synthesis. I already told you that DHA does not do anything for blocking UVB. So that doesn't make sense. We already know from studies that under maximal use conditions that sunscreens don't, don't impact vitamin D levels in the skin. And it's thought that sunscreens that offer good UVA protection may actually make your skin better at making vitamin D because UVA can degrade vitamin D that is made in the skin. 
And therefore, it's thought that sunscreens, I mean, they don't block out everything. They do allow some UVB to come in and probably maybe just enough, just to sit, may, maybe just enough to allow for better vitamin D synthesis while blocking out those UVA rays that degrade it. Now, when we're talking about DHA, remember I told you, it doesn't block UVB, the rays that actually do the vitamin D synthesis. It instead offers, some, offers protection from those longer UVA rays that would end up degrading the vitamin D in your skin. It's actually more compelling that vitamin D could potentially be improved, vitamin D synthesis could be improved with Sunless Tanner on board because of its UVA blocking abilities. What are the consequences of using sunless tanner? The most common adverse effect that you can develop from using a sunless tanner is the most common adverse effect that people can develop from using anything on their skin, and that is contact dermatitis. Allergic contact dermatitis can occur, but whether or not it's necessarily that you're allergic to DHA or something else in the product, namely fragrance, which is commonly added to sunless tanners to mask the kind of funky odor that they create, uh, you can be allergic to anything in the product. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're allergic to the DHA. It can be irritating, a little drying for some. And when we're talking about going into the spray tan booths, there have been some reports of people feeling like out of breath in there, but whether or not that's due to the, the spray tan itself or just maybe due to anxiety, claustrophobia, it's hard to tease those things out. That is, a, you know, that is one thing when we're talking about cosmetics, you know, adverse effects, they can fly under the radar because there's not really, you know, people will call in and report them, but there's not really a way to investigate them further to understand like what, what the adverse effect was, to nail down what it was that caused it, whether it was actually the ingredient or something else they were exposed to, what the actual diagnosis is. So that is one definite problem that we see a lot, obviously, with cosmetics is that they're not regulated in the same way for safety. I mean, it's not like you're using sunless tanner and then every few weeks you're following up with your doctor, right? So if there are adverse effects, a lot of times they might be missed. So I'm not saying that they're hundred percent proof of safety, but all the available research that we have and the longstanding use of sunless tanners in the cosmetic market suggests that they are safe especially the ones that you are applying at home in lotions or cream forms. The spray tans and their safety as far as contact with the mucosal membranes, we definitely need more research there. But as it stands now, we really have no evidence to suggest that sunless tanners are causing skin aging or having this adverse effect on human health. And you may say, well, you're a dermatologist. Shouldn't you be encouraging people to abandon the idea that a tan is healthy? Well, I would much rather people be using sunless tanner than going in a tanning bed or tanning their skin. And remember, my job as a dermatologist is not to impose my beliefs on people, but to help them make informed decisions for their health. Now, the other thing is that not everybody uses sunless tanners because they wanna look tan. Sunless tanners offer cosmetic camouflage for things. Many patients who have vitiligo, a disease where patches of the skin lose color, they benefit from using sunless tanners to camouflage that depending on what their background skin tone is. That might actually end up being a nice match for them and a way for them to camouflage those areas. And then um, they're also helpful in camouflaging uh, varicose veins for people who are bothered by them and you know can't necessarily afford sclerotherapy. So they're not, you know, it's not all about having that glowy look. And then I know that like in the fitness industry for certain competitions, it's almost a requirement for those I've come to learn that they use sunless tanners. And I think, you know, maybe the individual competing themselves, it's not like they always necessarily want to be tanned. It's just kind of a requirement of that competition. And so they're gonna be doing, doing it. And given that these melanoidins can protect from UVA rays, those long range UVA rays for which many people's skin disease is caused by, well then it definitely is, is something that needs further investigation because it could potentially be therapeutic for a lot of people. All right, you guys, that's my review on sunless tanners. I will list my references down below in the description box as well. But if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>